If you guys can't find cards at retail stores, this is what you need to do right now. Like and subscribe. Exactly. You heard the van. Like and subscribe. <laughs> but basically, we're going to be going over today your real options for finding cards that don't involve hunting retail. Everyone knows the situation. Yeah, it's like almost impossible to get yourself some Shining Fades. It's really crazy. I have read on local Facebook groups that people have been getting into fights and stuff like that. I've been exposed to it from sports cards. Van has seen it firsthand. All the card stuff is getting super, super out of hand. I heard, honestly, I heard this story from my friend, but I guess my friend told me that the lady who stalks at Target, she was like, yeah, I'm not going to like be putting out the cards today. And then a bunch of people got mad. And one kid, I guess, poured water in her purse, which is really messed up. She's like this like older 70-year-old lady, and she's like super, super nice. She's really sweet. She's the homie. She made a painting of Celica. I'll just show it to you guys one day. Have I talked about that? Yeah. Anyways. That's not cool. Yeah. And it's always kids with... Okay. These are the... It's either... People go in, it's either kids with drip... Or old men. Or old men who collect cards. Old so men with wives. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's just the situation right now. And I was going to make this Photoshop to illustrate it. Bam. Look at this. Look at this work of art. This should be in a museum. But anyways, so these are the types of people who buy up the Pokemon cards and the sports cards. And that's just the situation. Yeah, those are your competition. Those are the scalpers you're looking at. Yeah, this man right here. <laughs> Let me do this. This dude. Look at him. <laughs> 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 he just he just cleaned out your retail store. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, he's like, you want retail? <laughs> no. But anyways, I was going to use that. I was going to make a bunch of charts and stuff, but I think today we're just going to talk about it and stuff. Yeah. So you can enjoy my work of art in the background while we talk. But anyways, there's a lot better ways you could be spending your time than hanging out at a Walmart and Target all day. So me and Van are kind of going to go over it. It's just a pain. Like, trying to cop retail is such a pain, so there's a lot of other places you can divert your focus into. That's kind of why we haven't really been doing the Pokemon card thing. Like, we have. It's been low-key, though. Yeah, we've just been buying singles and stuff. Yeah, but we do it on the low. You know what I mean? Yeah. You keep it, like, super, super low-key. All the low-key moves, people don't expose on YouTube. But that's an aside. But, no, you guys just gotta divert your focus. There's a lot of ways that we've been coming up on cards without ever even having to step into Target or Walmart. Yeah. So, we're gonna share the secrets today. Really quick disclaimer, though, we're not gonna tell you how to find Shining Fates or other modern products in other places. It's kind of impossible. So, if that's your goal, then click off video. Sorry, gamers. But don't but, forget to like and subscribe before you leave. Yeah, anyways. But yeah, just don't get FOMO about modern stuff at the end of the day. I'm going to throw that out there really, really quick because we're just trying to go with the mindset of less competition equals less frustration. And that's really, really good momentum to be built. Because if you're having fun, you find stuff, you find cool things, you keep going, you let that momentum all build up, just feels way better. And that's how you make mogul moves. Invest. Stonks. <laughs> but yeah. So also too, really quick with modern is that it's, a lot of stuff is going to be printed for a while. Pokemon said they're down. They're building a whole new factory in a year. So expect to see a lot of sets that you can't find now, probably even more mass produced than they are. Yeah. Like, I don't know, maybe like certain shield and stuff. Yeah. We'll see what's up, but we don't know the details, but I'm just putting it out there. So you guys can keep that perspective just so you're not super stressed about missing out on shining fates and whatever hot set is released tomorrow all right first tip though guys is you should just go to hey stop get off of tiktok what do you think you're doing <laughs> we're making a youtube video <laughs> what's your excuse um i was watching pokemon card tiktok and i said they could buy a house with their charizard v max <laughs> yeah it's... so first tip for real is just go to your local card shop and buy singles they kind of go hand in hand don't go to your local card shop looking for shining fates because usually there's a crazy markup and it's probably gone yeah and yeah it's hard yeah i know we preach this pretty much all the time of buying singles but buying singles is literally the meta because mathematically it just makes way more sense it might not be as fun but it's really logically sound and it's just a lesson that i try to preach i try to preach it to myself i'm always like oh i'll just open one pack it'll be chill and i'll get a charizard or with sports i'll be like oh i'll get a jaw autograph and the, the reality is you probably won't <laughs> like we're going to do the math right here. I don't have a calculator, but basically 
it's the odds of getting a Charizard are one in two seventy one in Shining Fates. So two seventy one. Let's say each pack costs you five dollars. So two seventy one times five dollars to get your Charizard is thirteen hundred and fifty five dollars. So one thousand three hundred fifty five dollars. And look at how much a normal Charizard costs. Also, you still have to find the boxes. If you buy a resale, that's like 3K, I swear to you. Yeah, so you have to put in, you have to find, t- pretty much, you have to get 271 packs. So that's, you have to get 200, you have to get 27 Elite Trainer boxes. So good luck with that. That's going to take you probably five, that will honestly take you like a month to find, if you even do find any. Unless you just get lucky and find a case. Yeah, it's rough. It's really rough out there. So. Yeah, if you just buy the Charizard, look at it. You spend half the money, you get the card that you probably wanted. Unless you wanted other cards. Yeah, unless you want, like, some baby Chinese and Skyla. Mm-hmm. Even then, if you really, really think about it, another logical math thing, I'm really sorry. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> if you buy this Charizard, and then you spend the other 600 you would spend on two, 27 Elite Trainer boxes, you could probably buy out the whole set for the most part. And then you don't have to deal with bulk. Yeah, you don't have to deal with bulk. You don't have to deal with scalpers. You don't have to deal with trying to go to every single target and trying to get it. Or dupes. Yeah, exactly. You get exactly what you need and exactly what you want. The math just adds up. It's just really, really logically sound. So just go to your local card shop. It also is really nice, too, because you can just go into your card shop and you can see the condition of the card. You can see if it has weird dents. You can see if it has whitening. You get to pick and choose what you get, honestly. Besides modern cards, I think looking at vintage is actually really important at a card shop too. It gives you a perspective of what types of cards exist. Usually at card shops, they'll have like a bunch of bulk bins or like... They'll have... Okay, mostly from what I've seen with card shops, they have hollows in the front and they have like bulk bins and just random cards. You just want to talk to your card shop and just look at everything you can pretty much. Yeah, try to get their back stock too. Yeah, literally just be like, oh, do you have any other cards besides this? Oh, do you have this? Just literally ask them a bunch of questions and just get... The opportunity to look at everything. Also, you better be nice to them. Yeah, be nice. Be a homie. Don't be rude. Yeah. Anyways, that's another thing. But basically, if you look at all the cards in a card shop, it gives you a perspective of what types of cards exist. Like, me and Van just see random cards we've never seen before all the time at our local card shop. Yeah, and they're really cool, so we picked them up. Yeah, exactly. And so basically, like, I found this, like, this Archeops. I found all these, like, low-key shiny cards these are like shiny cards before hidden fades <laughs> there's that and then there's this palkia right here this is sl8 and this is like a secret rare from an older set and then i found what else did i find i found i found this dark tyranitar stamp local car shop is why i started learning about stamps because i was like oh stamps are really really cool and then um oh i found these eevee stamped ones with the city championship right there those are dope i got these for like six bucks like it's always like a super super come up if you look through everything it's just something you have to learn to do say something i need help um yeah go to your card shop be nice look for card and get good deal yeah so you will definitely find deals too if you look really really hard at the end of the day if you grind I think if you grind going to local card shops all the time and checking out their selection all the time, especially at card shops that buy out a lot of things, if you go to those, you'll find good deals and you'll learn a lot. It'll just improve your knowledge base so, so, so much. And you'll get so much more out of it if you grind that than if you grind looking for Shining Fates boxes at Target. Yeah, get to the point where you know like the whole stock of the card shop honestly and then get to know when they get new things and then get to know what's a good deal and what's not a good deal this skill set is way better than being like oh i can get shining fates today <laughs> yeah like what what are you which one's better finding good cards from vintage like multiple times or going to your walmart one time and getting lucky and finding a box mm-hmm. it's just a better skill set to have and you'll just find way rarer things too yep and for better prices like and subscribe on top of local card shops too, there's just a lot of other low-key places to find cards. Like you can try flea markets, you can try thrift stores, all that stuff. You just have to see what you have locally and just scope it out. That's honestly, you probably have a better chance of finding cards that way than you do finding them at Target. Maybe equal? Probably equal, but one grants a bigger reward than you splitting it with 20 scalpers. Yeah, exactly. You'd rather just come up on a cool binder for like 100 bucks than getting two ETBs of Shining Fates, if that. Yeah. 
So there's a lot of other options. You just have to make sure you leave no rock unturned. You have to look everywhere. And that applies to online too. If you use eBay and you use Mercari and all that stuff, there's ways like you can do ending soonest and try to snipe those. There's other low key websites that people probably don't even look at that you could probably come up on if you dig really, really deep. So it's just based off of your imagination, but I really do think the people who thrive are the people who just keep pushing and pushing and trying random ideas. Like, basically, I try random things. I don't even watch Pokemon on YouTube anymore because I feel like all their advice is kind of irrelevant to me in a way, like how to find good deals and how to find good cards. Once you have a basic foundation, you just build from there and you just keep trying things. It's all an experiment. Also, when YouTubers are like, telling you to do this everyone else is going to do it so that just gives you competition too Mm -hmm. exactly so you have to come up with i really try to emphasize this on the channel but you have to come up with your own ideas and you have to come up with your own tactics and your way to come up with cards and find good cards you have to figure it out because oh oh, go for it yeah but also like not everything's going to be slept on eventually because you're going to find something and then more people are going to expose it and find it so then you're going to have to keep moving on too Mm -hmm. you just have to keep adapting if you don't adapt you're going to take an l (laughs) yeah i was gonna say you die but i was like that's too (laughs) brutal so i was like you take an l but you kind of do die if you don't adapt yeah your method of cards dies you have to keep moving forward you have to move on from different cards as they get oversaturated and so that's just a really big point of emphasis might be a bit of a tangent but you just got to be innovative and keep trying. So keep and looking. Also try to find like different ways. So like instead of like different ways to get cards. So you're not just left on one and you're just banking on one. Mm-hmm, exactly. This goes to diversification. I'm going to make a whole video about that later. But you should diversify your portfolio. Experiment, diversify, have fun. Niches, you know, do all that stuff. Just make sure you're having fun. Have fun. Be yourself. The next thing you guys should do is work on Pokemon card things that aren't directly related to buying. Buying is its own skill set, and I do think it's really, really important, but there's so many other skill sets that you can work on and develop. So I think a lot of people forget that there are different avenues to being a collector than just buying cards. Like, yeah, the most obvious way to improve your collection is through buying, but there's a lot of other ways that you can intangibly improve your collection over time. And I think those get super, super overlooked. Like some examples are selling. And earlier when I was like, oh, learn more about different types of cards. That's another way to improve your knowledge base. And then there's trading. There's a lot of different ways. So we'll cover a few really quick. So I think one of the most obvious ones is working on your selling because it's just the the easiest way to improve your collection, honestly. Yeah, and then also, if you're holding on to profit, is it really profit if you're not even selling it? True. That's on the invest side. But yeah, is it profit? You tell me. I don't think so. Hold forever. Diamond hands. <laughs> I don't know how to sell. Hold forever. <laughs> but yeah, no. You. It, I think it's a really good skill set to learn because at the end of the day, if you want to buy and sell and trade... You have to learn how to sell. If you're only buying, where do the dividends come in? And how do you move things so you can get better things for your collection? From my own perspective personally, selling changed my whole life. That sounds corny, but it really did. Like learning how to sell things and learning how to sell cards literally taught me how to build my collection up. If I didn't, I would just be mindlessly buying cards for no reason. And... That's not bad. Like, it's fun, but it's kind of an L if you're trying to build up and, like, improve your collection and improve your cards over time. Yeah, like, if you want to collect for free, you have to think about those things. Mm Mm-hmm. If you want to collect for free, you really got to make those mogul moves, so you got to learn how to sell. Yeah, get that big invest. The second thing to work on after selling is just improving your knowledge base. At the end of the day, Pokemon cards are just based entirely off of knowledge. If I know something... And I'm like, oh, this card is really rare. This card is really scarce. I can use that knowledge to buy a million of these cards and buy it out. And it's chilling. Yeah, especially if it's at a good price point. Mm Mm-hmm, exactly. So if you understand the scarcity of cards, the rarity of cards, you understand the sets, you understand the context in which cards were made, that's all you really need to do to thrive. Yeah, all it does is take some time and research. Mm Mm-hmm. Research cards you really like. I think Pat Flynn said this, but he said the riches are in the niches. He said it on some Pokemon YouTube video. Shout out to Pat Flynn the Goat. (laughs) Check out his YouTube channel. Subscribe to him. But 
basically the more you literally people can hyper focus on one avenue and you can make a living off of that like some people focus on bulk some people focus on ex era cards some people focus on first edition watsy like you can really focus on whatever you want yeah everyone's a gym trainer for their certain card types Mm -hmm, exactly so you just want to dig deep and learn about everything so just dig as deep as you can but on the other side of the spectrum, you got to dig as deep as you can in multiple fields. That's on an aside when we talk about diversification. But when you're first starting out, just dig deep. Learn everything. Learn everything about a specific card. Learn everything about the card set. Learn everything. Like the pop reports. Mm-hmm. The price point. Yeah, learn everything you can. That'll help you out so, so much. Those two things are really important. I think other important things you can focus on and do instead of going to Target for Shining Fates <laughs> is working on your organization, building a network or relationships with people. Basically, you can find a lot of people who collect Pokemon cards and just build dynamics with them and you guys help each other out. I think it's really, really important. I think relationships are super important in terms of just kind of coming up in the card game. And there's like other things too, like just working on your grind, working on working (laughs) just being dedicated pretty much so there's so many avenues just this goes back to being creative but think about things that you can focus on that are important to you that have benefits you just gotta kind of be self-aware of it and just pretty much work into it yeah and everyone's put into different situations so you kind of have to improvise yeah and everyone's different like people are good at different things so find what you're good at and just keep going Mm mm-hmm Last thing you guys can do if you can't find Pokemon cards at Target is just stop buying Pokemon cards. Yeah, just quit the hobby. (laughs) Just quit. (laughs) Just kidding. But no, you can focus on other things. Like, it's okay to take a break from Pokemon cards. Yeah, you don't have to buy a bunch to succeed. Pretty much. You don't have to think about it 24-7, especially if it's frustrating. Because, you know, in Pokemon cards, it's really good to diversify your portfolio. I say diversify all the time. But if one card tanks... Others one, other ones will stay stable. There's less risk, less stress. It also makes it more fun. But diversification is super, super key. And at the end of the day, I kind of think that applies to life. Like, I'm not trying to get all deep and woke, but I think balance is really, like, important to life. So me and Van have been doing a lot of basketball cards. Yeah, and Ooh. balance is key to find your inner zen. <laughs> um, meditate with me for a sec. Um... But anyways, <laughs> that was a good sec. But no, we've been doing basketball cards. That's a big part why we haven't been posting Pokemon card videos. Mm-hmm. Just because it hit different. Basketball cards is a different industry. I think it's really good to focus on other hobbies too because it gives you a new perspective on the other hobbies. They all feed themselves. Like with basketball cards, we've been watching Sasha T. Shout out to Sasha T. Will you like talk to us yeah please reply (laughs) just kidding but anyways no there's it's just a different world like this homie literally trades like fifty thousand dollar cards and he trades up and he keeps trading up and it's like i think he carries like a hundred thousand dollar cash just to buy like just to buy cards and he gives me a perspective of how we can do pokemon cards you know yeah we don't have fifty thousand dollars but we'll get there yeah, and it's like we've been working on music and art and other stuff, and it just feels a lot better, you know? Yeah, and then you don't have to like constantly look for something. You can just be like, oh, this is good. I'm going to buy. Yeah, and if you're not hyper-focusing on things, sometimes I feel like it just comes to you. Like, yeah. things just come to you easier when you're not super hyper-focused on them, and you kind of just let it go. Yeah, when you're not trying is when you do your best. Yeah, honestly. But yeah, and it'll just save you frustration, too. Because hunting to find nothing is super, super frustrating. And if Pokemon is a grind and it's not fun anymore, you should just do something else. So I definitely, I don't recommend quitting. That was a joke earlier. But yeah, I don't quit. It's okay to take a breather. It's really okay to just go do other things. So, and also too, one last thing is if you have multiple, multiple interests, you have multiple, multiple ways to come up. Like if you, to give you an example, since me and Van do Pokemon cards and sports cards, and what else do we like? Yu-Gi-Oh? I sometimes. Um, and then if you like clothes, too, it's like you go to a thrift store, you have five different ways to come up, as opposed to the guy who comes in and they're only looking for Pokemon, you know? Yeah, you have way better odds of finding things that mm-hmm. have a chance of those things. 
And it's just a better parallel to life. It's a really direct parallel to life, I think. If you're focused on 10 different things, then you have 10 different ways to be fulfilled by those things. Yeah. You're full of zen. We're deep. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's pretty much it, guys. I just wanted to make a video because trying to get Pokemon cards is hectic right now, and this is how we've been having fun. So I just wanted to spread that and just kind of help you guys out. I hope it I hope it was helpful, at least. Yeah, and you've, we helped you out. You can help us out by hitting like and subscribe. You already know. Do it right now. We're just going to sit here until you guys like and subscribe. If, you ma if you've made it this far, you have to like and subscribe. I know. You literally watched the whole video. All right. Later. <laughs> the video ends when you liked and subscribed. <laughs> <laughs>